people are gonna, they're gonna say things, I know. Things about me, about me, I know. It's gonna make you stop loving me. Shh. Don't talk like that. Montgomery Clift. That name alone means a legend, a tragic figure, a genius. Yet when I hear that name spoken out loud or whenever he comes to mind, my feelings are deep and personal. I loved this man. Monty was my dear, intimate friend, and part of our friendship was our trust in each other, in knowing that the secrets we shared were sacred. There are so many things I can't tell you about Monty, but there are a few things which I think he wouldn't mind. I can tell you about the first time Monty and I met. It was in the director George Stevens' office, and we were there to talk about our first film together, A Place in the Sun. I remember my heart stopped when I looked into those green eyes and that smile, that roguish, boyish smile. And I was so scared, I thought, oh God, here's this accomplished New York stage actor, and I'm just a Hollywood nothing. But Monty was so funny, and he just put me at ease. That's when I discovered we had a similar sense of humor, which was also slightly perverse. We liked each other from that day on. We connected, and I think that comes through in the film. Also, what comes through is how Monty pours his heart and soul to making his character, the drifter George Eastman, believable. Of all the actors I've worked with or watched, Monty became his character because he was passionate about bringing reality and absolute truth to his characters. Truth was everything to him. I can only tell you how much I love you. I can only tell you all. Tell Mama. Tell Mama. Monty's intensity and dedication made such a deep impression on me. Working on this film with him made me feel like I was an actress. And I studied Monty. I studied the way he performed. And that's when I realized that acting wasn't a game. I wasn't playing with dogs or horses anymore. I was working with a great director, George Stevens, and Monty, a brilliant young man. Well, why, at this time, did you engage the boat to row the girl out onto the lake? In the back of my mind was the thought of drowning her. But I didn't want to think such things. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't. What I thought was so extraordinary was Monty's ability to go through so many different stages of a character, yet be the same person. Look at From Here to Eternity. Monty played Private Pruitt. When this man had his moments of bravery, you believed 100% he could flatten the world. And yet the same man could be flattened by one girl's rejection. I'm sorry. How do you think I feel? I mean, I've not got another pass for months. I've been counting on this like a kid counts on Christmas. Pruitt was such a complex human being, and Monty could reach out and tap into his emotions and bring them to the surface. Come on, clean it up. Clean it up yourself. What? You heard me. Rub your own nose into the water. Right? You know better than talk back to a non-commissioned officer? Yes, sir. But I've never liked being spit on, sir, not even by a non-commissioned officer. I got to work with Monty in three films. It was in the middle of Raintree County when Monty had his terrible accident. He wrapped his car around a telephone pole two turns from my house. Monty was in the hospital for three months and the wreck obviously had an effect on his looks. What it did was take away the delicacy of his features. Not the beauty, but the delicacy. He was in terrible pain and the pressure on him to finish the film was awful. That 4th of July race, what happens when you win? Well, according to a friend of mine, if I win, a beautiful girl will place a garland of oak leaves 
on my sun-colored locks. I'd like to be that girl. Maybe it can be arranged. Of course, Monty didn't like himself in this film, but that wasn't unusual for him. He never liked himself on the screen. I don't think any of us do. There are other things about Monty's personality I can tell you about. He was vulnerable, introverted, hysterically funny. Monty was also intelligent beyond words. In his acting, nothing happened by accident. He always knew exactly what he was doing. My mother, what you say about her, she was a woman. A servant woman who worked hard. She was a hard-working woman. And it is not fair, not fair what you say. I miss Montgomery Clift. I miss talking to him, exchanging thoughts and ideas. I miss laughing together and doing silly things together. He was the best friend I've ever had. And I think he would say the same about me. He was so brilliantly talented and such a tragic figure. Oh, I loved him, and I still do. Seems like we always spend the best part of our time just saying goodbye. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Clift meet a little too late for their romance to have a place in the sun. Saturday at 10.30 p.m., part of TCM's Summer Under the Star Salute to Montgomery Clift.